If you were to instruct someone to do the worst possible things in the morning to set their day up for failure, what would they be? Uh, wake up and stay in bed. Uh, well, wait, there are good reasons to stay in bed in the morning. But once those are completed, then staying in bed is... Curtains drawn. Yeah, curtains drawn, just using your passively scrolling on social media. Um, like there, are even, like, there are neurobiological data showing that when you are upright, you actually are stimulating this area of the brain called locus ceruleus. Whereas when you recline, you actually are less alert. Literally, the position of your body dictate some of your levels of alertness. So That's you, why you suggest uh, people to not sit like this uh, at their work desk, right? Yes, and if you're look and th if you're looking down while working, you're actually less alert than you could be if your eyes are averted slightly over and nasal most people level. that are on their phone, including me. And, and the postural stuff is really bad too. I mean, I'm getting, I'm trying to really combat that internal rotation. You know, that the C-shaped human kind of thing. You know, um, it's really not good. I'm really trying. I, in fact, one, this is so common now, the C-shaped human thing that um, it almost feels strange to, to be upright. You know, like people that yeah, exactly the open, yeah. uh, the the uh, sort of external rotation is, is good for us. We know this, but. In bed. I would say in phone. bed. So people are on their phone. They're in bed. They're, they're not getting enough light or they just artificial light or they're trying to get the sunlight through the window. Terrible. Um, they are then going and sitting and getting into like hip, you know, hip flexor contraction. Um, they're drinking coffee too early in the day. Uh, they aren't getting into any kind of movement, but it's mostly about the sort of randomization of activities. You're sort of making a cup of coffee while texting. Um, not getting sunlight, you know, then they're scattering that in with like a little bit of work, but then something hits that's stressful and they're diverting their attention. They're sort of building in this eight attention deficit like disorder through mm, behavior. So they're doing, they're not single tasking, they're not monotasking and they're not being deliberate or intentional with the things that they're doing. They're just allowing the morning to kind of come and take them wherever the wind blows. That's right. And I have to say, even though I describe my routine accurate, my morning routine accurately, if I were to really optimize it, and I, I've done this from time to time, I would get up, I would hydrate, and I would immediately exercise. I would use that early, you know, peaking of the cortisol response that comes with waking to get the body into action, sort of Jocko Willink style, right, 4.30. I always see his posts, but I see them at 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> precisely. Yeah. Um, so, you know. So the, Jocko was up before me again today. Yeah, yeah all, he seems to always uh, beat me by a few minutes unless I wake up in the middle of the night for a moment. But uh, to really get into action, because that's going to generate its own dopamine and adrenaline response. Anytime I've worked out really early, like if I have a flight and then, you know, and then moved into the other components of my day, I find that I feel better all day long. I, I also will say if I work out really early, maybe between seven and 8 a.m., well, then my first meal might land at 9 a.m. Yeah. So, you, you know, you need to be flexible with some of these things. But the general principles uh, apply. I noticed that you haven't put cold exposure into your morning routine. I'm going to guess you must have a cold tub of some kind. Yeah, I have a cold tub and a sauna. I've been less good about that lately. The best time to do that for me is on my cardio days. I do it after the because run. Because you don't want to do it post-hypertrophy because you're going to blunt some of the responses that are actually you're trying to get by the the workout itself that's okay. right and, and i have one i should say i have one rest day per week where i don't do any cardio or weight training i really like doing having a complete rest day but on that complete rest day if i can i'll do 20 minutes of sauna and then cold for three minutes 20 minutes of sauna and then cold i'll make the rest day reparative yep. and generally we make that social where we're talking about things and and we're very social in our working out like we we talk uh, my partner and I talk while we work out. I, you know, when it's set, when it's time to do a set, I become a little bit of like the drill sergeant. So like, let's do your set, do your set. But then occasionally I'm the guy doing a set and I'm like, all right, so this afternoon we're going to, you know. Uh, but I try and I try and really focus. I, and I enjoy training by myself too, but generally we train together. And then, and then typically if we're doing ice bath or sauna, we try and coordinate those things. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.